Adobe isn't to us creatives what they used to be. Uh, I grew up on Adobe. A lot of people did. They started off as kind of like a creative ally. And now they're just not that. Now, on the surface, you're paying a ton of money for Adobe just as the average customer. And you're about to start paying more. Uh, and you're kind of getting the rug pulled out under you, or at least that's kind of what it feels like. You're paying all this money for tools that don't stay stable, they crash all the time, uh, they lag, bad updates, gimmicky features, and Adobe just as a whole kind of gatekeeps innovation. I just, I cannot stand Adobe. <laughs> but I'm making this video to kind of guide you through how to get away from Adobe this year. Uh, so that you can finally get away from their ridiculously high monthly fees and still have software that does the exact same thing, but better, in my opinion, just because I've found alternatives that work so good for me and I'm mad that I didn't leave Adobe sooner. But I know I'm not the only one just because a lot of people don't realize that you can leave Adobe and still have a fully professional workflow and not even sweat it. Most people don't realize that you can like leave Adobe. You don't have to stay stuck with them, have a fully professional workflow, and it costs you almost nothing compared to maintaining Adobe subscription over the years and even just months. But what's nice about just getting rid of Adobe is that it's not just about replacing Adobe. It's not just like sticking it to the man. It's about finding tools that work and actually upgrading your workflow, to be honest, just because if you haven't tried anything else, you truly don't know what else there is out there. I promise you that. By the way, if you haven't met me yet, if I haven't come across your YouTube page, I'm Ethan. I've done millions of views across the various channels I've made content for, and this video editing thing I do is all I do all day long. I, I cannot rest. I just, I come home and I think about what videos can I make? I lay in bed and stay awake thinking about different YouTube strategies and videos to make. So let's start at the beginning with why Adobe has become the villain in the story. It didn't used to always be this way, and I remember this personally. I started on uh, Adobe Premiere Elements for, but as of now, as a professional user, uh, using the pro level software, uh, there is no end in sight to monthly subscriptions. In fact, those prices just keep going up. I'll link you to my most recent video about how Adobe's hiking their prices again, and that's just not going to go away. And unless you're making a really healthy amount of money with this software to cover your bills, any overhead you might have, just the fun extra stuff too that allows people to be people such as going out for dinner, just recreational things. You're probably struggling to want to continue to pay for Adobe month after month, just given what they're charging. They're implementing price hikes with not a lot of benefits that fully encompass their user base. Um, some of their stuff just feels gimmicky sometimes. And the fact that they're pushing this AI stuff so hard and jacking up the price of their subscription model so much to the point where it's just like, you feel like you're wasting your money if you're not implementing AI into every use. I, 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 it's just bad. It's just bad. And then they charge only $5 less for the plan that doesn't push AI the whole time. One of the ways that they trap you is keeping you in their own ecosystem. So they have so many of their own different applications and softwares where it's like, if you want to be able to use or make a change to a design that you made in an Illustrator file 12 months ago, but uh, you canceled your Adobe subscription so that you could afford to pay your bills, just because perhaps you're still learning, right? Everybody starts from somewhere. Uh, you can't make a change to that design now just because you're not currently paying for Adobe, even though that file belongs to you. And I, I think that's ridiculous. With the amount of money that they charge and that they'll get out of you over the course of 12 months, God damn it! if I want to open up that file, I should be able to open up that file. You give so much money just to be able to rent that software for that long. And their entire ecosystem just depends on itself so much to the point where it's like, sometimes I might just want to be able to open up one software from beginning to end, render that video and call it done. And that includes things like complex motion graphics, different visual effects and everything. I don't want to have to open up three different softwares to be able to cut, add motion graphics and effects, and then export. It's just, and everything is so interconnected that once you get started, you might find it hard to leave that system. And that's just another way that they trap you. So it's kind of like you're just renting your own creativity from this big giant tech company. Uh, they, they own you in your creativity in a sense. To me, that's just gross and disgusting. And I know some people feel differently about it and that might sound like kind of an exaggeration, which there's an argument to be made that it is, but I want to own my work. You know what I mean? I have these ideas, you have these ideas. We should be able to own our ideas and how we translate these ideas to screen. In my own opinion, I don't think anybody else should own that just because I made those ideas come to screen with a specific piece of software, et cetera, et cetera. Switching feels risky, but staying is bleeding you dry. So here's how we're gonna start to get rid of Adobe, okay? Premiere for video editors. And, and I am a video editor. This is a video editing and video production channel. Uh, video production is the main thing that we talk about. So our main target, the main thing that we wanna get rid of is Adobe Premiere. 
We don't want Adobe Premiere. And the best way you're going to do that is with DaVinci Resolve. Now, the contrast between Premiere and DaVinci Resolve is stark. It's actually a lot. Just because with DaVinci Resolve, you get a bunch of different stuff put into one software. That thing I was talking about where I want to be able to open up my stuff, import my stuff, cut my timeline, add my visual effects and motion graphics, mix my sound, and render everything in color as well, by the way all in the same program, that's what DaVinci Resolve was designed for. And I will preach the gospel of DaVinci Resolve as long as I am in this industry, just because it's such a better deal. And you only pay for it once. You pay for it one time. Right now it costs $2.95. And I bought this software, I want to say in 2022. And in that entire time, the cost has not risen at all. Now there are talks of Blackmagic Design implementing upgrade fees, kind of like the Affinity Suite, where I think uh, in a video what a Blackmagic employee was talking, it was like they were saying maybe like 20 bucks every year for the big version upgrade. So not all the little stuff in between, but from version X to version X plus one costs like 20 bucks. And honestly, I think that's fine. Given the alternative is paying paying a minimum of $55 every month for your Adobe software. So I'm willing to pay $20 a year versus $55 a month any day. Blackmagic knows their customers. They know why their customers stick with them. So they can make that decision uh, for themselves. But that being said, DaVinci Resolve is just such a great alternative and that is the best way to get rid of Adobe Premiere. Also, one of the best parts about DaVinci Resolve is that its color grading is industry standard. So all the big Hollywood movies that you see uh, on the silver screen or you see in your streaming, all of that stuff was color graded in DaVinci Resolve. There's no other software that even comes close to what DaVinci Resolve is capable of in color grading. So if you can learn that and you can harness it and you can get really good at it, you could really make your videos stand out that much more than with Adobe. But editing is just one piece, right? That's just one part of the process. What about sound design, logos, special effects, all that other stuff. So here's where the three amigos come in. And this is the Affinity Suite. The Affinity Suite is awesome just because the Affinity Suite uh, in one purchase, will replace uh, Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Illustrator, and Adobe InDesign. Those are four softwares gone in replacement of three. Affinity Photo is a combination between Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. Affinity Designer is Adobe Illustrator, and Affinity Publisher is Adobe InDesign. I use all of these softwares often. In fact, I use uh, Affinity Photo the most. I use it daily, to be honest. And sometimes I spend more hours in the day on Affinity Photo than I do DaVinci Resolve just because it's so built up and it's so very similar to Photoshop, but for the cost of one price, you're only paying for it once. Again, with all three of these other softwares. In fact, let's head over to the website right now and we'll see what they're charging. So Affinity has actually lowered their prices since I purchased and that's kind of whatever. But for all three of these softwares, uh, where you can get licenses on Mac OS, Windows, and an iPad, because uh, the full software is on iPad also, and I, I use it, it's pretty cool, for $165 one time. That, I just, why would you go with anything else? Why would you choose to pay for anything else when this is the same software? It does the same thing. It does the same thing. I just, get this instead. Please learn this. The learning curve is not as steep as you think it is. I, I struggle with change. It's just my personality. Struggling with change is something that has always been a thing for me. Change is uncomfortable. When it came down to my wallet, I ended up thanking myself just because this software is so similar. And there's so many tutorials online for it that like the learning curve is not as steep as you think it is. On top of that, I do also want to mention that if you're working on Mac, which I know a lot of people are, this software is blazing fast on Mac. In fact, I have my Mac laptop right here and I carry this thing with me uh, whenever I leave the house, to be honest, just because whenever I have a spare moment, I'm working on something and I know it'll work just because I use it all the time. And it's just, this video is not sponsored. I just really love the product. I really love the software just because if it means sticking it to Adobe and just getting the hell away from them, I'm going to do it. I also want to mention some workflow pros here. With these softwares, you can export in PSD, JPEG, PNG, PDF, all of the common like formats that you're used to that you have access to in Adobe, you have access to here also. So don't let that be a thing where it's like, oh, well, I can't save in PSD files. And you can. You, you can. All of these softwares export to PSD files. You can. 
Affinity also has this feature there. They call them personas in the software where in it's like sections of the software. So in, for example, uh, Affinity Designer, which is the vector based editing software, you can jump to the pixel persona and then the editing system starts to work kind of more like Photoshop, but all within the same software. It, it's really cool. And so you can bounce back and forth and then you can send one file from one software if you want to open that file up in the full version of the other software as well. It's kind of like what Adobe tries to do with Dynamic Link, but it works. What's really cool about this software is that designers have full access to a really great UI and they can do everything that they can do in uh, Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. Photographers are replacing Lightroom and Photoshop for all of their editing and retouching. And social media creators are making templates with ease. I use templates every day. It just makes everything so fast. And once you get to know the software, everything is snappy. And if you've used Adobe for a long time, like a lot of people have, you're probably thinking, well, my old projects still work. Yes, they will. So a lot of common fears that people have with switching uh, has to do with how much of a grip that Adobe has on the industry and the market. And the first fear that people generally grapple with is, well, my clients demand that I use Adobe. No, your clients demand that you deliver results. If you can deliver results, that's all that should matter. And if they're that sticky with you about using Adobe, then perhaps they're not worth working with if it's gonna cost you an arm and a leg in the meantime. But even with Affinity and DaVinci Resolve, you can still deliver standard file formats like we were talking about earlier. It's not a problem. Another fear you might be wrestling with is, well, my projects won't open. Sure, DaVinci Resolve won't open uh, a Premiere Pro file, but does it actually? Shit, that's something I need to figure out. If, if you know the answer to that question, let me know, because I, I kind of think it does. Because you can save files in Resolve as a Premiere Pro project. So it wouldn't make sense to think that you can't go backwards from that. I, I don't know. I don't have Premiere. I'm not going to experiment with that. I don't care to experiment with that. But uh, if you know the answer to that question, leave it down in the comments. I'm curious to know. Additionally, you can always start out with new projects or you can render assets out of your old projects with Adobe that you can use in the new one. Just carry them over. I, I promise you spend less time rebuilding than you think. And once you get a workflow down in these other softwares, everything is just smooth as butter. The next fear is that there's a learning curve and that's totally valid. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but both Affinity and DaVinci Resolve both offer huge free tutorial and lesson libraries online. You can spend any amount of time that you can dream of watching tutorials, learning stuff from the official companies on YouTube. They basically give you no excuse not to switch at this point. Given the structure of the tools with all of the softwares in the Affinity Suite, Adobe users feel like they're right at home oftentimes just because everything looks so familiar UI wise that it's not a very steep learning curve. Like I was able to figure stuff out and then me, I'm not a graphic designer. I am not an amazing photographer by any means, but if I can figure this out, you can too. And also communities are massively helpful. Just forums on the internet, like Reddit or a black magic forum. There's a lot there and there's a lot of people willing to help. There's more than you think. And the last biggest fear that people end up wrestling with is, well, what if I regret switching? Well, you can always run both side by side. Get the other one because you're only paying for it once. You're not paying monthly. It's not like you have to pay uh, two monthly subscriptions for creative softwares that do the same thing. Get both, run side by side, see what works better. And if you're like, yeah, I can actually get on board with this other thing where I'm not paying an arm and a leg every month. Well, then drop Adobe, get rid of it just because then you have the thing that does the exact same thing as Adobe and it doesn't cost you monthly. That way there's no hard commitment needed and you don't have to worry about, oh, well, I'm jumping in head first and water's gonna be cold, I'm in for a shock. You don't, you don't have to do it that way. So what does a fully Adobe free toolkit actually look like? Well, for video editing, it's DaVinci Resolve, 295 bucks once and then you have it forever. And if you don't wanna pay the upgrade fee later, you don't have to. If they even implemented it. It's not even confirmed that they're going to implement that yet. In fact, they've talked about it in the past and never ended up implementing it. And here we are still talking about it. So they might not ever implement it, but 295 bucks. There's your video editing right there. Your visual effects come in the Fusion tab inside of DaVinci Resolve. All your audio editing comes in the Fairlight tab inside of DaVinci Resolve. You can do all of your coloring and more inside of the Color tab inside of DaVinci Resolve. So now we've negated the need for Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Audition, and Adobe Media Encoder because you can also have a full tab for exporting in any format you can think of inside of DaVinci Resolve. There's no reason why you shouldn't be switching already if you make videos, if you use Adobe Premiere Pro just because you have been given everything that you need to get away from Adobe once and for all. At this point, if you're still with them, it's it's kind of a choice to want to continue paying this stuff, to be honest. For photo editing, you want to get rid of Lightroom and Adobe Photoshop, Affinity Photo, Vector and Logo Work, Affinity Designer, and Layout and Publishing, 
uh, get rid of Adobe InDesign. It's all about Affinity Publisher now. So if you want to fully get rid of Adobe and just kind of kick them out of your workflow entirely, you're looking at about a one-time cost between DaVinci Resolve and the Affinity Suite of about $460. And that to me is crazy because you can still pay less than what it would cost to pay Adobe for all of their apps one time every year. It's just cheaper. It's better. You need to try it. So when you're getting rid of Adobe, you're not just getting rid of Adobe, you're choosing your own creative freedom, you're choosing to save a little bit of money every month, honestly, just because in today's day and age, not a lot of people can comfortably afford to pay for these softwares, given what their schedules look like and their own personal interests and careers. You're choosing tools that work faster and with you, and honestly, just a setup that puts your creativity first. So please look into switching, just try it. If you switched, please leave a comment. I want to know how your experience went and I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you consider subscribing if you want more videos like this or enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys around. Thanks so much for watching.